Reading, whether technical or for personal learning, is a part of the process of becoming less wrong about the world. You come into a book with some background knowledge, priors. Learn new information, gather data, and update your beliefs to more closely match reality, a posterior. Try to choose books that teach you something and that you also find intriguing by Will Corson towards data science, a data science conversation. So hi, I'm Charlotte Fassa, second year PhD student. And today I really want to show you my method of finding and gathering new information from articles and putting it all into this big research bank. And I created this research bank with Notion because I personally really like Notion, as you know, and I find it really nice and intuitive tool to use to gather all my ideas. So it's a system that I really use to capture new ideas and also to kind of gather and create new ideas from this information. And I think if you have to read a lot of articles as a student, or you have to write a lot of papers, this method will really help you and will really allow you to get really creative with the research process. So first of all, I gather all my ideas in a research bank. And there are three main reasons that I personally really love creating this kind of research bank in Notion. And that is first of all, to not forget all the material I have read, because I read so many articles and books books throughout the year that to remember everything I've read ever and also the places where I found this information is really hard. So because I all have it in one place, which is my research bank, I tend to not forget all the material I've read. And the second reason I love a research bank is that it really allows me to make connections between new ideas. Because usually when I read something in an article or I find a new idea, it doesn't immediately occur to me how I would connect it to a bigger picture of a big project. I'm usually working on. But because I have these ideas for a long time in my research bank, it usually allows me to make new and creative connections that I have not thought of before. And the last reason for a research bank is the most obvious reason, I think, and that to just have one place where all your ideas and everything you've ever read in your entire life kind of comes together. And it kind of becomes like your own library of ideas that you have read throughout your life. So I'm going to show you in this video an example of how I've created this research bank and I will do it through a little bit less directed reading because I think there are kind of two forms of reading and that's directed reading and undirected reading and directed reading is usually when you want to find an answer to a direct question you have and I think this type of reading is pretty straightforward because you just have to find the answer but I'm gonna talk a lot about undirected reading and undirected reading is just a type of reading you have to do a lot as a student because you have to read a lot of papers a lot of books and kind of get gather all of that information and combine it somehow in a new and creative way for your papers or your research project. And what I've noticed is that people struggle a lot more with undirected reading, how to really systemize this and gather the ideas to combine it into a new project, for example. So in general, in reading, there are three main aspects. That's collecting, retrieving, and combining the information. So the first step of reading is collecting or encountering new information and data. And and I've personally really systemized this process because I think it's the part of the process that can take the longest. So when I read articles, I usually have three apps that I always use that allow me to read many articles throughout the year and really speed up the process. First is Instapaper, the second is Readwise, and the third is Notion. So first of all, Instapaper. So I usually find a lot of my papers on Twitter, for example, or Medium when I'm just browsing the internet. So a lot of the articles that I read, I just encounter naturally. And then the way I gather them is by using Instapaper. So Instapaper has this kind of web clipper app. So it's this add-on on Google Chrome and you can just click it. And then every time you encounter a nice article that you want to read later, you click this add-on and then it gathers this information in this really nice newsletter format. And the way I do it is then every day I take about an hour and usually that's an hour when my code is running on the background or an hour in the morning. And and I go through my Insta paper on my phone, iPad or computer and just really take this hour to highlight certain parts of articles that I like. So the nice feature of Insta paper, at least I find, is that it's really this daily type of newsletter and it allows you to really highlight articles pretty easily. And also another thing I really personally like is it says how long it will approximately take you to read an article. So I know if I have a few short minutes, I can read an article on my phone or if I have a little bit longer, I can deep dive 
life into an article on my computer. So after this, I have all these highlights from my Insta paper. But the thing I want to do is gather all these highlights automatically into one place. And that's where the second step comes in Readwise. But what Readwise then does is it collects all the highlights you've made into one place. And you can then go through your highlights at your own leisure or you can look at them and kind of see what you've highlighted throughout the years. But what I then like to do is this first step and that's to transfer it over to Notion. So maybe if you've watched my video on Notion you know that I really use Notion as kind of this second brain or research bank and that's because I really like Notion's flexibility like it allows me to put in a lot of information and also to play with this information in any way I want. So on Readwise you have this automatic Notion integration surface so it automatically transfers every highlight you made to your Notion page. So I can show you real quick what that looks like. So for example, this is my Readwise page on Notion. So Readwise automatically made this page for me. And here you can see some of the um, highlights I have from podcasts. So for example, this is from the Anthropocene Reviewed, which is a podcast I really recommend. It's by John Green and it's super, super good. So here you can see a small snippet that I made. But the nice thing of Readwise is it does the same with tweets, for example. So I also collect um, tweets usually and for example also articles so here you can see some of the articles I have done this with so one article I read recently was this collective minds social network topology shapes collective co cognition a super good article I really recommend it and I made these highlights then on instapaper and then what readwise does for me it collects these highlights and then as you can see here it puts all these highlights automatically into notion so yeah I really like this method because I think this type of integration and automatically having it in your notion really allows you to become quite creative and really catch a lot of ideas that you just encounter so the main part of this part of the process is not really to understand or to think about ideas really deeply but it's mostly to capture new ideas that would spark your creativity or your curiosity and another way for me that really for me excites me and sparks creativity is learning new languages so this video is also kindly sponsored by Linguda so I take a lot of inspiration from quotes and from other languages that I've learned so I've learned in my life a lot of languages but one that I'm working on currently is French and one thing that I personally find really important when learning a language is that you not only passively learn the language but you also deep dive into the language and I personally really recommend to do this with native speakers. I think being able to talk with native speakers really increases your ability to learn a new language quickly and to become fluently quite quick. So with Linguda what I like is that I'm able to fit it into my super busy schedule because I can select my own language classes and that really allows me to slowly increase my abilities by speaking with native speakers and also something that I really like is that you can choose your own topics that you're interested in. So they kind of have this set course curriculum which gives some structure but throughout that curriculum you can also jump around between different topics and really select topics that you like. So for example during the holidays and in the weekend I'm slowly trying to make it a habit to learn one topic in French a week. I'm not really there yet but I do try to keep up this habit such that I can also talk with my friends abroad in a while. So right now Lingoda also offers this seven day trial with which you can take three group lessons or one private lesson completely for free. And also if you decide to sign up afterwards with Linkuda, I do have this discount code down below that gives you 30% off of your first payment. So if you're learning a language as well right now, I would love to know which language you're learning. So please put it down in the comments below and otherwise let's get back to the video. So after the first step, you have now your research bank in Notion and then the second step is really to retrieve this information. So something that I've noticed is that it is really hard sometimes to go over the information again. So sometimes we have the tendency to collect a lot of information but to never look at it again. Again. So I have a few methods that I use to kind of overcome this problem and one thing that I really do is usually that when I'm working on a new paper or a new big project I will go over most of my notes and just see what kind of clicks with a new project that I'm making. So when I was working on autoencoders there 
I was also going over my notes at that time. And one quote that, for example, for me really clicked was this one. And that's truly conscious ignorance is a prelude to every real advance in science. And somehow for me, that kind of connected with autoencoders. And it could be that for you, this doesn't connect at all, right? But I think this part of the process is a little bit more creative. So this is usually what I do. I or go over my notes when I'm in an active project or sometimes what I also am working on right now is to try to work with this new concept that I call a slip box. And I have the idea from Elizabeth Phillips, another YouTuber that I personally really like. And what she does is that once every half year, she goes over all the notes and she puts it in this so-called slip box. So this is an example of a slip box that I I've made. Um, some of them are a little bit bigger, but I put it into topics that I find important. So for example, one topic that I find important is wisdom. And then I have subjects that for me fall under wisdom. So that's extreme value theory, mind body connections, statistics, machine learning. And then what I do is I go over all my notes in my Readwise app and I connect them to the different subtopics that I have in this slip box. So for example, um, the Hall of Presidents and a new partner that falls is a note that I've made from um, the Anthropocene Reviewed. And if I find that it fits with the topic of wisdom and extreme value theory, I will put it under that. And this process takes me quite long. So I would say I don't do this too often. I do this about once every two, three months or when I really see that I've gathered a lot of notes and that I kind of need to clean them or kind of need to review them. And then the third step that I kind of want to go over and that's to really try to creatively use all the information you have gathered. So you've now have your research bank, you retrieve the information and then the last step is to really combine them and allow you to creatively play with these ideas. And the main idea I usually keep in mind with this part of the process is how can this idea help me in my research or my projects that I'm working with. And the way I do it is that I usually try to incorporate all the ideas that I've just retrieved into active projects I have right now. So that can be that I'm teaching someone something and I'm going over all of these ideas in my slip box and see if I can gather some of the quotes to kind of make my points more clear. Or I will use it in papers that I'm writing. So if I'm writing a paper at that moment, I will also go to my slip box, look at the part of wisdom for example, and try to gather some quotes or some ideas that really, that really for me allow to convey an idea that I've put in my paper writing process. And also I think a good idea is just to keep it in the forefront when you're discussing something, for example, with friends. And I think by doing this and really playing with these ideas, you will kind of see that the amount of information and how good you become in a topic will increase dramatically. This seems like a really slow process, but I think if you do this over a couple of months, you will see that you will really start to remember a lot of the ideas that you've gathered. And also people will kind of um, come to really respect some of the ideas that you connect, because I think the ability to connect abstract ideas is what really sets apart someone that is a really good researcher or an interesting student from someone that just follows the um, normal lines of the book. And if you're also working on creating a research bank or you have other methods that you used to do it, I would love to hear that. So put that down in the comments below because I always try to optimize my process as well. And otherwise, see you next week. Bye.